I got you some garlic breath, man. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. Hello everyone and welcome back to whatever this series is called at this point, uh, Walter K's Guide to the World of Dating Gaps. Now as you might have gathered from that little cold open, uh, th this video is going to be slightly different and I'm quite excited about that, uh, but you know, just stick around and we'll, we'll get to all that, right? If you are here exclusively for the little bit where Baby No Money shows up, I'm sure some massive legend has left a timestamp in the comments. If no such massive legend has appeared, you can be the massive legend that leaves the baby no money timestamp in the comments, but just keep in mind I can see your watch time, and I mean yours specifically. Dan. Now, initially, today's video was exclusively going to be about uh, the algorithm and swiping, uh, but I think it's worth having a little bit uh, before all that talking about uh, the purpose of dating apps as a whole. Because uh, obviously, a lot of people have a very pessimistic outlook about these dating apps, a lot of people have a uh, very, you know, negative connotations, and a lot of people somewhat rightfully uh, do say that, you know, dating apps are kind of a last resort or, or not even that and that you should focus on, you know, improving yourself in, real, in the real world and trying to find uh, romance in the real world as well. In fact, uh, in order to uh, see how people sort of uh, gauge these apps, uh, I went out into the streets of Riga myself to get some opinions. But I didn't just go to any old street. Hello everyone and welcome to a street interview version of uh, Tinder Isn't That Difficult. Uh, and if you're wondering why I look uh, sweaty and tired, the answer is over there if you can hear the screaming and behind me as I just got out of a Baby No Money concert. Also, this microphone doesn't work, which is why I'm also holding my phone. Uh, don't worry about that, uh, we'll fix it in post. I say as I clearly haven't fixed it in post, so I I, otherwise I wouldn't be commenting on it. So, we're going to go out and uh, ask uh, the wonderful people of uh, the city of Riga and the people visiting it, uh, what's their experience on Tinder, specifically when it comes to swiping or, you know, other dating apps, I guess. There's a big black van behind me. Now, as we started interviews, uh, we, I was in the middle of the, the first interview I had with this wonderful person, and then we heard some cheers coming from a, uh, down the street, and uh, we realized that could only be... him. Yeah, mostly no's, but there were some good ones, so... I think, I think that's... I think that is what they say, him. <gasps> Walter, you can give him garlic bread! I got you some garlic breath, man. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. I have one question, though. What are your thoughts on Tinder? Man, I love the girl I'm seeing, so... <laughs> All right, don't need to use Tinder. All right, fair enough. Thanks, man. <laughs> we also had the chance to speak with Jungle Bobby, who was the warm-up act for Baby No Money, uh, and also, you know, great person, great act, great sport, uh, and... This was his response. Oh my god, the crystals! Yeah. Love the show, I love the warm-up, everything about you. Uh, but I have uh, one small question for like, uh, or maybe a couple questions for an interview. That's completely unrelated. Have you ever used like dating apps or Tinder or something in your life? Never. Never? Never. What are your thoughts on them in general? Uh, I think if you want to find real love, you have to be in the real world. Alright, cool. Yeah. Cool. Alright, uh, thank you. Awesome, man. Appreciate it. Yes, yeah. love. Thanks. Riga. Uh, it's awesome. Okay. <laughs> Honestly, it's all well and good. I, as someone who has gone both the route of uh, meeting someone on dating apps and, you know, in the real world by chance, essentially, through uh, mutual hobbies, in fact, um, I feel like I'm in a pretty good spot to tell you how dating apps can actually be kind of useful, though. A lot of people who are struggling with loneliness, with uh, th th these dating apps and not having a lot of luck on these dating apps, they are suffering as a result of uh, a lack of socialization, or just being socially awkward in general, or at the very least, not being the best at uh, flirting, or, or initiating conversations, or some other 
a bigger or smaller uh, problem when it comes to communication. Uh, so generally speaking, uh, in the moment, it can be better advice to say, you know, actually go out there, go to a bar, go to a convention, go to a club, go to wherever it is. You are likely to encounter like-minded people uh, and, and uh, shoot your shot there. But it's not going to be very useful if you have no prior experience with any kind of romantic, flirtatious, sexual, whatever interaction to begin with or if your experience with all that is very limited. That is, my, in my opinion, where dating apps can certainly come into play. Uh, even if it isn't uh, going to result in a long-term relationship or any kind of relationship you uh, necessarily desire in the moment, it can still help you practice certain interactions. I will say that that's mostly going to be a topic for the next video that I want to do. I do want to go out more and uh, talk to people and uh, see what their uh, suggestions are for like, first messages and, and conversation pieces and, and I want to talk about why you really shouldn't just be googling uh, best Tinder pickup lines, but that's sort of the idea. There is a purpose to these apps, even if it isn't always so blatantly obvious. Now, before we get to the actual swiping, there is the uh, matter of setting your search criteria. If you're using something like Tinder uh, or, or most dating apps, you will have uh, two or three search criteria features guaranteed, maybe four. They'll be gender, age range, and distance. Now, gender is fairly self-explanatory. You know, if you like men, you, you, you say you want to see men. You like women, you say you want to see women. You say you do like uh, everybody, you, you, you mark down everyone. That's, that's fairly straightforward. Although when we'll talk about the algorithm later, I will bring up how uh, you do need uh, quite a bit of left swipes. You need a couple of no's in there. Uh, so there might be some strategy to s enabling men as well, even though you don't like men, uh, thus getting the chance to swipe left more, but at the same time you might swipe left too much in that scenario, or you might uh, be shown to more men and thus the boost you get from swiping left on men in the first place is, uh, you know, not you know, negligible or, or negative. So I'll ultimately just, just select your actual preference. Next is the age range. And here, of course, the advice is very similar. Just set it to what your actual preference is. Be reasonable. Uh, chances are, if you're like an 18-year-old dude or something, not a lot of cougars out there that will actually be interested in you. Despite what porn tells you, most older women will actually be, you know, interested in people closer to their age, as opposed to someone half their age. And likewise, if you're like 40, uh, or if you're like 30 or 40, maybe, you know, move the bar away from freaking 18 year olds. And then the funkiest part of this is distance. In most dating apps, including such dating apps as Tinder, Field, I believe Bumble as well has this uh, sort of thing going on, uh, but do the way it works is that it will show you only people within the range you have set with certain exceptions. For example, if someone has liked you, they will show up even if they are further away, which of course implies, and the implication is accurate, that it doesn't take into account uh, the distance you have set when it comes to who can see you. Even if your distance is set to about like five kilometers, you might still show up in the swiping stacks for people who are hundreds of kilometers away. This is by all accounts an intentional feature. It increases the number of profiles uh, that uh, you will be shown to. Uh, it increases the odds of you getting likes, even if those likes are super far away. And I do have a pet theory that you might show up more frequently to people that are further away. Because if you don't have premium, those likes will be hidden and you will have no knowledge of how far away the person that has uh, liked you is until you purchase gold and you realize that they are in goddamn Namibia. Now there are other criteria if you have premium, but I'm not gonna delve too deep into that. It is usually just not worth getting these premium services on these dating apps in the first place. Now onto the actual swiping. The most basic principle you need to follow is that you should swipe left, you should swipe no more often than, than you uh, swipe right yes. Not too much, but roughly maybe 40% yes, 60% no is a good balance to have. For women, it seems to be better if they swipe right even less, because women tend to be boosted in the algorithm in the first place to show up to more profiles, 
and men, you know, get through more swiping in general. The algorithm at its core works in a very simple way. There are people who will download these dating apps and then complain that they get no matches despite the fact that they've swiped right on every single profile, which of course is what eliminates them from even showing up for anyone. Once you swipe right on completely everybody, the app is basically going to assume that you are either a bot or a troll or so, so desperate that you are not going to be a good match for anyone to begin with. You should essentially think of it this way. Let's say that there are 10 people, right, who have swiped right on this one single person. And going down, the top person has swiped uh, 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 right on 100 people, next one on 90, 80, 70, 60, 50, 40, 20, and 10. Now, with all other things being equal, including uh, whether or not these people have premium accounts, whether or not their profiles have been fully filled out, because that does affect the algorithm as well. Uh, same with uh, profile verification, whether they've been verified. And let's also presume that they're all, you know, equally attractive, charismatic, etc., etc., so that they all have equal popularity on Tinder by all other metrics. The person who has swiped right on less people is going to have the highest priority to show up for this one single person that all the other people have also swiped right on. They have shown to be more selective, and so the app, the algorithm, uh, sort of uh, figures out that, okay, so these two are more likely to be compatible than this person at the top who is significantly less selective. Plus, at the end of the day, the person who has those 100, uh, 100 swipes right, well, he might have roughly equal odds anyway because he's going to show up for those hundred people eventually this person at the bottom will only show up to those 10 people so you so the app might as well show this person to them so when you are swiping i think it's important to have criteria for yourself because for a lot of people you might not have the highest standards you might look at a person and be like they're attractive i'd like to go out on a date with them Fair enough, but due to the algorithm, you need to have additional criteria. You might want to look at descriptions, you might want to look at whether or not they're, they're smokers, what their diet is, uh, maybe the app shows you their political or religious views or family plans. Uh, on Tinder, it will show you whether they're interested in short-term, long-term, uh, flexible relationships, they're looking for just friends. Uh, you should try and see if those preferences match yours. One of the questions I asked people on the street was, hey, what are some reasons that you will uh, immediately want to swipe left or right on someone? Have you ever used uh, a dating app such as Tinder or something else? I have used a fair share like Tinder, Bumble, Yubo, which is not really a dating app, but yeah. yeah. No, no? Yes, never. Yeah, but like jokingly with friends. Okay, kinda. okay. What are some things that if you would see on someone's profile, it would immediately make you either swipe uh, left, that you know, no, or swipe right, yes, on their profile? Um, if I was still single, what would make me swipe right? Mm -hmm. Wait, right was good. Right is right? good. Okay, okay, cool. If, if they like any, like, metal or new goth, like, any, like, alternative style of music, also if they're kink-friendly and they're, like, open-minded well for me shared interests mm -hmm. is a very big thing stuff like fishing gaming watching movies just yeah, yeah, something we could do together yeah. animals, animals dogs cats hamsters snakes anything cool like it's like it gives you something to start to talk about and then branch out to something more hopefully uh, what would make me go like hell no is if they're like you know, as I said before, like divorced old men who go on their fishing trips and they think they can get with me because they tried cock and ball torture once and then they're just like, yes, I'm a BDSM expert. So yeah, <laughs> basically that. Well, for me, no swipes would be political mostly. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty open-minded when it comes to politics. Like mm -hmm. we could disagree about the economics or, and yeah. such and I wouldn't really care. Yeah. But uh, stuff like human rights, equality, stuff like that, if we don't really really agree, I couldn't really see myself swiping. Yeah, I'll double his answer and also add like, uh, 
kind of wears me out when they place too much importance on their body. Like when I mm. like, like every photo is like a workout pic or their abs or overly sexual. Like yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Like when, I guess it depends what you're looking for in a dating app, but I would not be looking for that. Yeah. So like no shirtless uh, mirror selfies, right? Yeah. Well, Nah. Yeah. If they're tasteful, but probably not. <laughs> if we're talking about my own experiences, about uh, how I sort of did this when I was active on dating apps, when I was active on Tinder, there were some very specific things sometimes that immediately made me swipe left. And these are also kind of things you pick up on the more you use the app anyway. If you can basically tell that the account is fake, of course swipe left. Uh, if, if it's some person who is unverified, has no description, has low quality photos, or, or some other bizarre details, that is probably a bot, so you can swipe left on that. Descriptions are a big deal, I very rarely swipe right on someone who didn't have any kind of description, and I definitely swipe left on uh, any description which consisted entirely of like a social media link. Because that is usually an indicator that this person doesn't even check their messages on Tinder, uh, instead either preferring to be messaged on this uh, other app, which I wasn't going to do, or them essentially just using the platform to advertise. Uh, if their description or, or picture includes a uh, interest, uh, which is uh, a requirement for them, or, or, or just a requirement in general, whether that is height, whether that is uh, having a car, whether that is uh, looking a certain way, having a certain interest, uh, that doesn't suit, uh, that doesn't fit who you are, uh, what you have to offer, that should also be an immediate swipe left. In turn, what made me swipe right was obvious shared interests. As much as the uh, interest section uh, in on Tinder sucks, it's still uh, a great indicator when those interests match, uh, so that would be a good reason to swipe right. Uh, if their pictures include something that is an obvious interest, for example, if I saw any other cosplayers, on uh, Tinder, I would swipe right on them immediately. Uh, and uh, in turn, those people are also more likely to swipe right on you because that is uh, immediate common ground. They've set an interest, you've set an interest, the interests match. That is one of the rare things where both of you can see that the other person is interested in the same thing immediately. And sometimes you just gotta go with vibes. Maybe if you're just uh, not that selective, Maybe if you, you know, feel like you're swiping right too much, limit yourself. First off, limit how much you use the app in the first place. Uh, don't spend your entire time on the app, uh, especially if you buy premium, because then you get unlimited swipes, which, uh, amusingly, makes it possible for you to be flagged as a bot purely through number of swipes you do. It's like, so, sure, it's like thousands, but at the same time, you can hit that number if you're just mindlessly going through it and fidgeting with your phone and fidgeting on Tinder every other freaking minute. Pace yourself and you're going to have a much better time. Because ultimately, you should still be also striving to improve yourself as much as you can. I think you should strive to be uh, a better, more interesting, a cooler person tomorrow than you, are, you were yesterday. And, you know, your dating profile over time will also uh, reflect that. So I think it's, it's, it's worth, you know, saving some swipes for that moment, in a way. One last thing I neglected to mention when I uh, did the previous video, I really should have brought this up, is the uh, immense boost you get to your profile if you make a new one. The app is essentially trying to entice you to use it more, so when a new profile is created, they get this instant boost. So if you have a really old profile, that hasn't done well, uh, I suggest fully deleting it, making a new one, making a better one, and then going from there. Uh, that's gonna do it for this video. Um, thank you so much for watching. Thank you to Baby No Money. Thank you to Jungle Bobby. Uh, you know, stream them, stream them both. Uh, Jungle Bobby, especially, he's a much, uh, you know, significant, uh, significantly smaller artist, uh, and he and he's uh, he's great. Uh, he was a lot of fun. Uh, and, and clearly a, a good dude, so, so I'll see you, uh, next time. When I actually have an ending for this sentence, when, when, when we talk about, uh, when we talk about messaging people. Yeah. Are you gonna make him send you a baguette? No, I'm gonna give him garlic bread. <laughs> Interview him with the baguette. <laughs> the baguette is actually Stick genius. Stick him with the baguette. Interview him with the baguette. <laughs>
Yeah. It's like a three stack because the mic doesn't even work. <laughs> also, it's just a prop. Yeah, it was supposed to work. Doesn't though. <laughs> It's supposed to be lore, lore. Give me the. Give it's me supposed the to connect with Bluetooth with like a little plug, but the plug doesn't work, so it's like it's just a prop now.